Okay, here we are again with my package from Chris Edwards, and this is going to contain my Picasso 4, which I, he was testing for me, and some goodies from him. And we've got the uh, brackets he made for my 2500 so I can mount my hard drives. Thank you, Chris. And yes, the ROMs, the 314 ROMs that allow the Picasso 4 to work with my 4000, hopefully. And we got the chip straightener, which uh, will come in handy. Thank you. Awesome. I love this day glow look. This is so cool. Thank you, Chris, for 3D printing this stuff and uh, printing me uh, another one too. That's, uh, that's cool, having both colors there. And yeah, there's the Picasso 4, so let's uh, get to it. Okay, so we have got to get this Amiga 4000 apart once again. Oh, oh boy. Oh boy. Oh my gosh, it's so small. Yeah, be careful with the... All right. Jeez. Why is the 4000's cover such a pain in the ass? Oh my God. All right, so what we have in here is a VLAB card, which is a 24-bit uh, digitizer. You can actually plug in S-Video or Video, and without a time-based corrector, uh, you can go ahead and scan in a capture frame. And it captures at 1 30th of a second, so yeah, it'll give you a nice clean image. In fact, uh, Doug over at uh, Tenmark there did his video um, on this card, I believe, already, and showed uh, how it would scan in images, and then you could you know, manipulate those images and whatnot. It was a pretty cool card. I put it in here because I had it and I was testing all those URL slots and that's why I was in here. Underneath is the Retina card, which is my 24-bit buffer, you know, card so I could look at 24-bit output. Uh, the Retina card is not a RTG card. This is the very first version that they came out with. This was strictly a frame buffer card. So later on, they came out with the Retina Z3, which I believe was CyberVision compatible driver compatible and you could use that or maybe it was just Picasso driver compatible, I forget. But uh, so I'm gonna pull these guys out. So that's the VLAB card and there's the S video and the composite in and whatnot. So slide out so nice. There's uh, it's massive two megabytes of memory. You can add more though, I think up to four. Well, I just uh, just broke my chair. I'm noticing there's screw holes on this chair and there's screw holes on the chair mount. So I'm thinking I forgot to screw them in. All right, so before I can put this new, this new, before I can put the Picasso back in, unfortunately this is a full disassemble because I need to get in here and put in the 3.14 ROMs. You know, I don't have an ability to burn them myself and I don't ever buy the, kits because, I don't know, it's just laziness on my part. But yeah, this is going to require a full disassemble. Oh no. This is why I hate taking things apart. We just lost a metal washer and nut in the 4000. Oh no. I just lost a screw and nut, I'm sorry, a washer and a nut down inside the 4000. And we can't have that floating around in there because it will short out. Oh, oh, oh fun. And we get rewarded with a couple treats. We got uh, we got a post, we got a washer, and we got a nut. All right, back to the disassemble. It always sounds like you're murdering the 4000 when you do this. Ugh, hate this. Hate doing this to this thing. This whole tray is in the way. So now we Gently pry up the 060, set it aside. After getting <clears throat> the case mostly completely apart, 
we are rewarded with our, our lovely ROMs. All right, they are marked high and low. These are also marked high and low. Thank you, Chris, for that. High is on the right, low is on the left. We'll use our fancy Chinesium puller here. Oh my gosh. Yeah, those, were, uh, those were in there with purpose. Okay, that sounded like it was breaking it out of the socket. And yes, we did bend a pin, but not to a level of disaster. We have a pin straightener that he included, right? He did, look, so see? He included the pin straightener tool so that I can repair my idiocy. All right, so uh, if I actually use this, it actually looks like there is one, one place you're supposed to stick it in is on this side, okay. Then you just, just squish and hold, I guess. I don't know, it's not, not very informative. What did I say? High was on the right, low was on the left? Ah, oh, geez. I don't have OS 3.1.4 installed. I won't be able to boot this drive all the way, but what I will, will be able to do is verify that we get video output from the Vicasso once these ROMs are put in. At least that would mimic or mirror what Chris's results were. I also suggest if you're gonna do this at home, having much better lighting than I do and not be filming it so that you can't really get in there. All right. We have the ROMs in there. I mean, we've got the 030 in here. So we could boot with that. So this is a phase five Mark II 68030 from Cyberstorm. So these two jumpers here on the 4000th board do have to be moved to internal from external. I know that's weird. I mean, it seems weird to me. But yeah, these jumpers, to work with this particular accelerator card, the jumpers have to be moved to internal. I guess how the 4000 is built is kind of the opposite of the 3000, where on a 3000, normally you would go to external when you add in an accelerator card, but here it's like the external acceleration is the actual onboard. And then you go to internal when you use the FP, the CPU slot. All I know is on a 3000 with this CPU card, you do not change the 3000's default factory jumper states. On the 4000, you do have to move those into internal. So now we've got a 68040, 25 megahertz, 4000, and 3.1.4, and then we're gonna plug the Picasso in. It's definitely easier to install this with these rails out, so I kind of took them out. This goes in so much nicer if you just throw the 4000 up on its sides, so you can get this nice and lined up, especially if you had the little slots on the side here, and then you can just kind of tink tink, it drops right in. The problem is, without having the bracket to lift it up, a little riser here to hold it, uh, it is a little risky having this card maybe ground out on the bottom. So I'm gonna use the power, plastic power rail from the 4000, just kind of temporarily kind of just sit in here. It's low profile enough, like above the battery there, allowing it to sit. So it's very, very subtle. And if this works, what will happen is, because it's a Picasso 4, we should see video on that dinky little monitor over there, okay? At least a, a ROM screen, if it indeed is going to work. So here comes the moment of truth. Hmm, green power light and no signal whatsoever, actually. Well, that's, that's a bummer. <laughs> so you guys are probably screaming in the video, weren't you? Q, your 4000 doesn't have onboard CPU and FPU. You big dummy, yeah. It's a card, just like the 060. Your silly little Q brain was getting trapped between a 3000 and a 4000. You big dummy. Okay, be right back. All right, so yes, for those of you paying attention at home, uh, as I was rambling on about how the jumpers work on the 4000 and sounding like I almost knew what I was talking about, the one big omission uh, was I referred to the 4000 and it's 68040 and its math coprocessor as uh, being on the motherboard, being native, and it's like, no, they're on a processor card, the 3640 that, it, that the 4000 comes with, well, the, the 040 model comes with. I'm sure all of you were just uh, like, probably wondering, what is he talking about? Why would he say that? He knows better than that. Or does he not? What's wrong with this dude? Yeah, sorry, it happens. 
I don't know, my brain, it just doesn't work sometimes. And that's what happens. So yes, I'm putting the 060 back in because it's what I have handy right now. And that means I had to move those jumpers back over. So that would explain our no signal, no start because there was no CPU. Sorry about that. I know again, that was probably really obvious to all of you. And I was, you probably thought I'd gone to some level of insanity. And I did, and that's why I did that. Jumpers are set. I did remember to do that. Okay, so we are left in a position on this current update of the Picasso Adventure 4000 with everything being torn apart once again, as we saw. And uh, I'm uh, going to leave it at this. So what we're going to do next is the Amiga 4000 that this card was verified to work in Obviously, I'm, I can't get the whole computer here, but what we're going to do is get the daughter card from that computer and test it in here. So I'm going to swap the daughter card from the known working 4000 Picasso setup into mine. And if the Picasso 4 still does not work using that daughter card, then that tells us that it is most likely something on the main motherboard of the 4000 that chip wise is just a version that the Picasso doesn't like and that's a big bummer um, obviously you could have to go through and start looking at all the chip revisions and seeing what's different and that can be a huge can of worms alternatively uh, I could get the daughter card plug it in and it works and then I can send this daughter card back and we can see if maybe the video slot portion of the uh, Video slot is not working. We know that the Zorro part of the video slot works because I've been able to put other cards in here and they show up. But it could be that this spot, this part of the daughter card doesn't work. And unfortunately, I don't have any full length cards I, I can test in here. Nothing else to test to see if another full length video slot card is detected by this Amiga. So, yep, that's where we're going to be. The continuing adventure. Never give up, never surrender, right? Keep going. So the next time we'll see this, yeah, we'll have the uh, the daughter card and I'll do an update on see where we're at. All right, thanks for watching. The adventure continues. And so does the mess on my desk.